Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with CCW Safe to talk to you about my new book, The Concealed Carry Manual. Now, the, today's chapter is going to be on combat shooting, and this is a favorite subject of mine. I, I enjoy teaching this, I enjoy um, developing it as a skill for myself, and so the first thing I talk about is we need to define what we consider to be combat marksmanship. And truthfully, there are three levels of marksmanship. Preparatory marksmanship, basic marksmanship, and combat marksmanship. The ultimate goal, obviously, being combat marksmanship. And the way that we define that is being able to deliver rapid and effective shots on target under time, under stress. So that's kind of like the pinnacle, if you will, of your skill development. You might have the technical skill to be able to do that, but you may not have the ability to do it on command. So if there's no pressure, no stress, or any other variables that would potentially force an error, you're good. But when we start to put a little bit of pressure on you, whether it be through time domains, or force on force, or God forbid, a real world setting, that's where we really start to see the difference between basic marksmanship and combat marksmanship. Now one of the things that ties very closely into all levels of marksmanship is understanding the relationship between time, distance, and exposure, what I sometimes reference as TDE. So how much time do I have to deal with the situation? What's the distance that I have to look at? And what kind of target exposure am I working with? So time in most self-defense settings is very compressed, almost non-existent, I understand that. Distance is also somewhat close. Exposure, well, that can be the entire body, the torso, or maybe only the head. So when you're practicing, you want to make sure that you are constantly varying those, those elements so that you're not just trying to train in a vacuum and train in a single domain or kind of like on a flat surface, that you have depth to your skill level, if you will, so that no matter what type of situation you find yourself in, you're skilled enough to manage it. You have the techniques, you have the skill to do what you need to do to survive that situation and hopefully never have to be in that situation. Now, the next thing we talk about is there is the constant balance between the speed and the accuracy. And when folks ask me what's more important, well, truthfully, they're both equally important. But you've got to be able to determine what direction you're going to go. And I'm really talking about from a training perspective. And a lot of times people will start off moving down the speed road right away. And my recommendation is to start off moving down the accuracy road really put a lot of effort into developing a high level of skill when it comes to marksmanship. As you get better as a marksman, you'll naturally start to increase your speed. It's a byproduct of just developing good technique. And then once you have that marksmanship skill honed, now it's time to go ahead and hit the gas and start to push the boundaries, push the limits. What we want to try to do is we want to fail often and fail quickly. I know that sounds weird, but it's so incredibly important to your development that once you have started to figure things out a little bit and we start to fail, we need to start figuring out, well, why did I fail? What am I doing wrong? Start to focus on how to correct that and then start doing it again. And then you find a new failure and then you start to learn what that failure is all about. You start correcting that failure and just keep moving and moving and moving. We want to get comfortable being uncomfortable, and a lot of times that means failing, pushing the envelope and starting to actually make mistakes because we're on the outer, we're on the threshold of our performance abilities, basically. Um, when it comes to essential skills that we want to work on, I mean, there's a lot, there's so many, but really one of the most important essential skills that you develop is your marksmanship, how well you can place around where you want it to go. That's true marksmanship as far as I'm concerned. And a lot of that is, kind of like centered around understanding the process. There is a process to being able to do that. And once you understand that process and you implement that process in everything that you do when it comes to shooting, now it makes it really hard for you to make a mistake. And that's what ultimately leads to us being able to become automated in our process. It almost becomes instinctual. And that's ultimately our goal because we wanna, we wanna try not to think about what I'm doing here shooting-wise, so that allows me to think about my problem and how I'm gonna solve it. Um, the last thing I talk about is if you were to really kind of centralize your focus on you know, the, the physical skills, what are gonna be helpful? Well, number one is using a good athletic stance, an action-oriented stance. 
Number two is having a good tight tinch, you know, good tight torso that's tense up top. That's going to be your shoulders and your arms. And lastly, is going to be a good crushing grip. Now, each of those has so many details that it's not really reasonable to go into them in this video, but future videos will really kind of like isolate each of those components so that you have a better understanding of what it takes to actually do those well. All right, if you want to learn more, feel free to check out the book. You can do so by going to concealedcarrymanual.com or post some questions down below. Be happy to answer them. Until then, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. Take care and stay safe.